all our polytopes in these lectures will be assumed to be convex. So polytope means the convex all of finitely many points in an Euclidean space, which is the same as bounded intersection. Of finitely many closed affine house spaces. in R to the power T. So either you take the convex all of finite many points or you take bounded intersections of finite many closed defined house spaces. We have usual definition of vertices which means the most singular point in the boundary of a polytop, edges, which are one dimensional faces or facets, maximal proper faces. The simplest possible polytops are called simplices. A simplex is, by definition, the convex all of n points with the condition that the dimension of this polytope is the number of points minus 1. So points are exactly zero dimensional simplices. Or segments are one dimensional simplices. So two dimensional simplices are exactly the same as triangles and three-dimensional simplices are called tetraedra. In all these definitions, the lattice, the integer lattice, e to the power t, plays no role. Next, we are going to focus on lattice polytopes and special subclasses of lattice polytopes. Here's a definition. Part one. A polytope P is called lattice if it is the convex all of lattice points, which is the same as the vertices of P are lattice points, or the vertex set of P is a subset of Z to the power T. And the second, and the central definition of normal polytopes. So P, a lattice polytope in RD, is called normal if the following condition is satisfied for any natural number C and any integer point Z and the cis multiple of P, they exist C lattice points in P whose sum equals Z. Here, the sum is understood in the usual additive structure on R to the power D, and repetitions are allowed. And we must have the petitions for C large, larger than the number of lattice points in P. So here's our polytope P. It's a small temple. The origin somewhere. This is C times P. 
this is P, the origin. We pick any lattice point in CP and must decompose into such sums. What makes this definition not trivial is the condition of the polit points to be lattice. If we draw this condition, then any point Z is the series marking of some point in P. You just can divide Z by C, but the problem is that, that this point may not be integer. Not all lattice point polytopes are normal, and the classification of normal polytopes is an interesting uh, problem. So next time I'm going to give you a few examples of classes of normal polytopes. Examples. All lattice polygons are normal. Here, polygon means a two dimensional polytope. Of course, in dimension one and zero, the normality is also automatic. This can be extended to the following class. Let P be any lattice polytope. And C be a natural number, at least the dimension of P minus 1. Then C times P is normal. And 2 implies 1, because when the dimension is 2, then there is no condition on C. Next is lattice parallelotopes in any dimension are normal. Not necessarily rectangular parallelotopes and in any dimension. Then we have the following class. So P, a lattice polytope. And it assumes that every edge of P has at least four times the dimension of P times Dimension of P plus 1 plus 1 many lattice points. Then P is normal. In other words, there is a dimensionally uniform law bound for the lattice lengths, for the edges. That guarantees the normality property. And the lattice length means number of lattice points minus 1. So the lattice length must be, if the lattice length of every edge is at least 4 times the dimension times dimension plus 1, then polytope is normal. The next is perhaps the simplest class of normal polytopes, called unimodular simplices. So unimodular simplex. Means a lattice simplex and this notation of dimension n minus one such that The set x2 minus x1 
xn minus x1 is a part of a basis of z to the power g. So here we assume that the ambient space is r to the power t. Of course, we could choose any of these xi's instead of x1. And the condition is symmetric with respect to the xi's. Now let me give you two examples of non-normal polytropes. So one is large volume empty synthesis. Empty synthesis. of large volume are not normal let me explain the terminology used here so empty means the vertices are the only lattice points in the simplex And large volume means, so it's a full dimensional case, so the dimension of the simplex is d, and delta lives in r to the power d, then the Euclidean volume must be more than 1 over d factorial. So 1 over d factorial is the smallest possible volume a lattice full dimensional simplex in Rd can have. And if the volume equals 1 over d factorial, then the simplex is unimodular. So large volume is exactly non unimodular. So empty non unimodular simplices are not normal. And one more example of non normal polytope. of different type so take the coordinate directions in dimension 3 and take the points 3 times e1 5 times e2 and 2 times e3 where E1, E2, and E3 refer to the standard basis vectors. And consider the right simplex with vertices, the points just mentioned, and the origin. So this simplex is not normal. And this is not an empty simplex. Okay, now I can formulate an open question known as Oda's question. Tadao Oda asked this question many years ago, still wide open in all dimensions, starting with dimension three, and it consists of the following class of polytopes. P in RD, a lattice polytope, is called smooth and the following condition is satisfied. For every vertex, The primitive
edge vectors that is edge vectors form a part of a basis of z to the power d. So we have our polytope vertex v and we look at the edges emerging from v and the first points along these edges. So these points must form a part of a basis of z to the power d and this must be satisfied for all vertices. Then the polytope in question is called smooth. So the others question is whether smooth implies normal. Of course, the terminology smooth, normal, integrally close, they come from toric algebraic geometry, which I'm going to explain in one of the lectures, and to provide algebraic context. But next, in the next lecture, I will describe some previous attempts to characterize normality in simpler conditions. All these attempts fail, but the counterexamples that emerged have led to interesting development in the theory. Let's end on the first lecture.